With every passing day, more and more of Bob's cells die. And the stem cells which manufacture new cells are dying too. Bob is quite simply wasting away. It's the cumulative effect of cells dying all over his body, which is taking its toll on the quality of Bob's life. When he walks, Bob's brain sends signals to stimulate the muscles in his legs. But in his spinal cord, free radicals have killed off nerve cells. Connections have been broken. Signals can no longer get through. Bob's leg muscles have grown weaker. These weakened muscles need more oxygen to keep them moving. But Bob's breathing apparatus from his windpipe to his lungs is not what it was. He's lost one-sixth of the delicate surface which absorbs oxygen into his blood. His breathing is shallow and inefficient. Worse still, Bob's heart has lost a quarter of its muscle cells. Less and less oxygen is being pumped to his legs. He used to be able to run at more than 10 miles an hour. Now, two miles an hour is as fast as his legs can carry him. Oh, it's Grandad. Morning, Dad. Morning. What's this in, Simon? Reward for helping me with a new stock. Would never have happened in my day. You only sold typewriters. <laughs> so you think you need to practice then, do you? Bob's most precious organ is his brain. Somewhere in the trillions of connections between his brain cells lie his personality and memory. If his brain cells were replaced, everything that Bob is would be lost. <laughs> Splendid. Must run in the family. It's not that brain cells don't die. Free radicals and even the odd bump on the head have contributed to Bob's brain losing 50,000 cells each day of his life. But because we're born with many more brain cells than we ever use or need, the effects of a shrinking brain take a long time to show. Even though 10% of his brain cells have died, Bob is still mentally sharp most of the time. But the death toll isn't evenly spread across his brain. Certain abilities are beginning to suffer. Your dad never used to help me in the shop. Well, maybe you should have paid him. Did he give you anything to do? You know he did, Grandad. He gave me that chess game. Uh, yeah. Deep in Bob's brain is an area called the hippocampus. Its role is to translate experiences into memories. Since he was 50, it has lost one-fifth of its cells. His brain is now less able to lay down new memories. This may explain one of the paradoxes of old age, that Bob can't remember recent events as well as he can recall experiences from his distant past.
Every time we learn a new skill, our brain cells reach out and forge connections with each other. But over the years, Bob's brain has become less able to make these fresh connections. It's more difficult for him to learn new skills. The organs which feed information to Bob's brain are degenerating too. In his inner ear, years of noise have destroyed sound sensitive cells. He began to lose the ability to hear high pitched sounds when he was only 30. Since he was 50, Bob has been farsighted. Ironically, his sight has been damaged by his body's own efforts at repair. The lens in his eye maintains itself by regularly coating its surface with a transparent protein. But as more and more layers have been laid down, his lens has become rigid. And a rigid lens is more difficult to focus. Bob's senses may have suffered the ravages of time, but the skills he's practiced throughout his life are still as sharp as ever. When connections between brain cells are used repeatedly, the connections themselves stay strong. Might be a new table, but still the same old game. Just like his muscles, the more Bob uses his brain cells, the less likely they are to die. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Simon, thank you for letting me beat you at pinball. Bye. Bob has kept himself alert and alive for nearly 90 years. But the truth is, that's far longer than humans were designed to survive. And now, Bob's losing his grasp on life. The cells in Bob's body have many functions, but all of them generate heat, and this heat helps to sustain Bob's life. But now, with a dwindling number of cells, he's colder than he used to be. Even worse, Bob is less able to conserve his body heat. Our temperature is controlled by the blood vessels in our skin. When we're hot, they expand to give out excess heat. When we're cold, they constrict to divert blood and heat into the core of our bodies. But Bob has lost this ability. Even though he's cold, the blood vessels in his hands are still losing heat to the outside world. Like old pipes coated with deposits, his vessels are coated with fat and calcium. His central heating system is no longer working as it should. Bob's temperature control is one of many systems in his body which are only just coping with the demands of everyday life. In Bob's stomach, his lunch is broken down by digestive acid. His stomach shields itself from this acid with the cellular lining. But just like everywhere else in his body, the stem cells which generate this lining are starting to die off. <laughs> 